This is Prashant and today we are going to solve a JavaScript interview question that was asked in a Uber's interview. Uber being a major tech giant, solving these types of question can help you prepare better for your interview. So let's get started. As you can see on the screen, this was this question was posted on Lead Code in 2022 and the candidate he was not able to solve the problem he has bombed it but the good thing he did was by posting the question over here so that others can practice and be better prepared for the interviews if you see the problem statement and if you read it carefully you'll understand what we have to create we have to implement map limit which is the utility function that produces a list of outputs by mapping each input through a asynchronous iterative function. There is also a provided limit that dictates how many operations can occur at once. So we have to create this map limit function. This will take an array of or list of inputs, a limit and async function that will get all the inputs one by one and then it will perform certain operations on that and it will return us an output this asynchronous function this will take the input and a callback function and it will return us the processed output through this callback function and finally we'll have a final callback that will give us the complete result after processing the list so if you see the breakdown of the problem statement, we will receive input, an array of inputs, the maximum number of operations that can be performed at any one time, so the limit, and then the iterative function, this will be an asynchronous function, so uh, in this uh, there can be an asynchronous operation performed, so we will have to consider this most, and then finally the callback function. So let's copy this and let's try to solve it. Let me copy everything from here and then we'll move to code pen and we'll try to solve this. Now, two things to notice over here is that the iterative function is an asynchronous function. That means it will handle all types of asynchronous operations. And second is the limit. So, limit states that at any given time the max amount of operations that can be processed or the max amount of inputs that can be processed is of the given limit only so if i see over here we got a list one two three four and five and if we break them in a limit of two so you receive one and two as the two inputs can be processed first and only after they have been processed we can move to the second list which is 3 and 4 because we are processing in a limit of 2 and then finally we will have another one which is 5 so if there are more values to the inputs or more number of inputs so we can expect that too in the next list so 5, 6 and then 7, 8 and so on so here we get a batch of requests or we break down the input into batches of a limit of the number provided which is a limit of n let's say so we get one and two these two inputs will be processed first and only when these two are done through the asynchronous operation then we'll move to three and four and only when this two are done then we'll move to five that means these two numbers or these two inputs can be processed concurrently or parallelly so inputs in a single batch can be processed concurrently or parallelly and each batch will be processed sequentially that means only after this first batch is done then we'll move to the second batch so all the inputs in a current batch can be processed parallelly but the second batch or the subsequent batches 
will be processed only when the previous batch is finished that is in the sequence so these two states that we have to handle async operations in parallel and async operation in sequence now these two questions i have already solved and posted on this channel you can i'll add the link to these questions in the description you can go through that and this map limit this is a combination of these two parallel and sequence along with arrays map method so basically we are going to create this map method over asynchronous operation now this problem has been derived from this async library that is available it is a very popular javascript library or a utility library that provides us a helpful helpful functions to do all types of asynchronous operation and from here the map limit was given and in the uber's interview we are basically asked to create a polyfill of that so you can see in the asynchronous library this map limit is mentioned and how it works what they have given in the question is a little bit different than what is in the map limit or in the async library but it will function similarly so i have already solved this question in my book uh, javascript interview guide if you are you know preparing for javascript interview you can check out my book i'll add the link to the book in the description now that we are clear with the problem statement so let's get started and let's solve this problem the first thing i am going to do is i am going to create a function construct chop that uh, the, what this will do is it will take the array inputs and the limit and this will return us an array of array and it will chop the inputs in a sub array and it will return us this array of array so that we can process the inputs in the batches so here what i am going to do is let i equals to 0 let results equals to be an empty array and then while i is less than input dot length what we are going to do is we are going to in the results we are going to push input dot slice i comma i plus limit and then we are going to update the i equals to i plus limit so that it will keep on slicing the input and then it will return us the final input in part of sub arrays and then we'll return the results so in the implementation we have created this helper function chop that will give us an array of array breaking down the inputs in the limit and then here let's get the chop and i'll say use this method chop with the inputs and the limit let's print the chop and see if it is working fine or not so if i run this we are getting an empty object so results dot push okay spelling was wrong for length let me run this again so we got the sub arrays 1 and 2 3 and 4 and then 5 in an array so we basically got all the inputs in the batches and now we can process this as we have found out right so we have to process the inputs in a single batch parallelly or concurrently and then all the batches will be done sequentially so one after the another so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make use of an method arrays reduce method one of the most powerful methods that is available to solve the problems uh, when you are dealing with or iterating on the list so reduce here we'll have a dot b so a is basically the previous value and b is the current value let me rename that and then it also takes the initial value so in the initial value i'm going to return promise that will resolve and here we'll have an empty array empty array because the result that we have to return will be an array so that's why at the initial i'm going to return an empty array then from here i'm going to say previous dot then 
so then we'll have a value now this value will be empty array because initially the promise is resolving and then that is why we are going to have this previous dot then as empty value and here i am going to inside this once i got the value what i am going to do is i am going to return new promise that will either resolve or reject and then inside this i'll say that current dot then so i have to pass the current value right so current value is basically the array's value so here i'm going to say current dot for each because this is a sub array the current right we are iterating over array of array so the first value of the array is a sub array that holds two values one and two and after that three and four and five so i'm going to iterate over each of that and here let's say i create a temporary array to store the results now this single value will be passed to the iterative function and then iterative will have a callback second so c so this will have a callback and now this callback will return us the user plus id so we pass the input and then we have the callback now this callback we are going to store so we are going to store in temp dot push result so we are going to push that in the result now when the temp dot size so because this is a asynchronous operation right the iterative function performs a asynchronous operation that means the value that will be returned in the callback it can be after any time of delay so if it is going to be pushed in the set time out this can be after a delay now once we get the value in the return we'll add a condition to check if the temp dot length i mean the returned value the number of results that we receive is equal to the number of results we have processed then only we have to resolve with the previous value as well as the current value so what we did is we are processing the in request the input and after that once the async operation is done we this callback is invoked what we do is in this callback we store the result and we make a check that the number of input that we have in the current uh, uh, sub array and the number of results that we have received if both are matching then only we are going to resolve the operation so here we are going to resolve the value now this should return us a promise because we are returning a new promise here so let me store this in a final result in a variable and now at the end what i am going to do is i am going to say final result dot then because it is returning a promise i'll get the result now this result i am going to pass to this callback function so that it can print it now let's try to run this so we got the output right if you see in the sample output we have uh, we we see user 1 user 2 user 3 user 4 and user 5 now while processing because these two inputs are bashed and these two can be run parallelly that means every time when you run this uh, function right there is a expected behavior that either user 1 will be first or user 2 will be first depending upon when the asynchronous operation is finished so the first two inputs value will be user 1 or user 2 in the random orders the second two values will be user 3 and user 4 in the random order so in the output you see user 2 is first and user 1 is second then user 4 is there user 3 is there and finally user 5 
so user file will always be at the end because this is what this was in the third batch in the first batch these two outputs because they are run parallelly so they can be in the random order so either user 1 will come first or user 2 will come first similarly for user 4 and user 3 if i run this again you will see that there can be a chance that the output it changes so see we got user 1 and user 2 because these two run parallelly in a batch so we expect a random output and then for the user 4 user 3 the order is unchanged and user 5 will always be at the end similarly if i run this again you will see that i get the same output user 1 user 2 and then this time we got user 3 first and user 4 second and then user 5 remains at the end so this is how the map limit works now here we have only handled all the good cases good cases as in we are expecting that we are not receiving any error that's why we are resolving every time but i want you to handle the case of reject also in case if error occurs so you have to handle the uh, you have to store the failure also the all the errors in a separate array and then in the final callback you have to result the positive values or the values that were completed successfully and along with that we have to return an error set also and here in the results you have to print all the results along with the error so i leave it up to you to solve this i have already solved this and i have written about this in my blog add add the link to that in the description but i want you to solve this off on your own and if you cannot you can read through the blog and learn it i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time